Hey there, Nicole McGuirk here with some ideas on using masking, stamping mask paper with your unmounted or wood block stamps. For the first part of this card, I'm going to be using these unmounted Whiff of Joy rubber stamps and the Inca Deca Do masking paper. So I'm laying out my stamps to make sure that they're going to fit on this paper I'm using and I'm making a skinny long card that opens from the bottom. It's a horizontal card. So I'm going to ink up my first image, which is the girl. You want to start with the image that's going to be in the forefront of your card and stamp it first. Then everything else will be behind. And here's what the masking paper looks like. I have a few little um, scraps of it here. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this girl on the masking paper before I move on because you're going to need to mask each step of the way. So there she is and I'm cutting her out and it really doesn't take that long. Just kind of quickly cut her out and then layer that right over your image on the project. Next I've already stamped the bench on the stamp -a jig placement little clear sheet there inked up my bench stamp and I'm going to press it down. Normally I wouldn't remove this mask right now but I want to show that now it looks like she is sitting on that bench with her cup of hot chocolate or cup of coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and place that mask right back on and I've stamped another mask this time of the bench. I'm going to cut it out and you want to remember to move your paper not your scissors and stamp on or as close to that black line as you can, that black outline, so that you don't get a funny shadow effect. So I've layered that now on my project, and I've also stamped the Whiff of Joy pumpkins on the stamp of a jig sheet for placement. I'm going to ink that up, and then stamp that. Oh, got to do it again. Get my placement place my little T ruler, stamp -a jig ruler there, ink up my stamp, and stamp that right next to the bench. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a mask for those pumpkins as well. Before I do that, I'm going to stamp another pumpkin on the other side. Same stamp, but I'm just going to use one of the pumpkins. And there's what it looks like. Okay, I made a stamp, and I, or a mask rather, and I only masked the left side of the project so far. I'm using my stamp -a jig to um, ink or to figure out placement for this Hero Arts old letter writing background stamp. You can't see it really well in the video here. I just need it well enough so that I can stamp one side of the project like I am here with the scattered straw distress ink. Then I'm going to have to carefully peel up my mask, layer it there on the other side of my project. This way I didn't have to create two masks. One mask can be reused multiple times. Then I'm going to take my stamp -a jig clear sheet, line up that old letter writing with the side I've already stamped, ink up my stamp, remove that clear sheet, and stamp the old letter writing on the right side of the project. Then I'm going to just take a little of that scattered straw ink and the ink blending tool and ink up the edges of my project. And you can see I moved the mask there so that I made sure and kept my pumpkins free of ink. A little vintage photo ink on the edges too to just kind of make that pop. Now it's time to peel up all of my masks and there's what my image looks like. And I'm going to quickly go through my Copic coloring. You can see here, coloring the pumpkins, how they look. The, the orange was really pretty, but you add these layers of color and just how much these pumpkins come to life. And you can go over them as many times as you need to to get the correct coloring or whatever looks good to you. So here, especially now that I have these two pumpkins Next to each other, you can see the difference before I go ahead and go on and add the, the dimension with the shading and blending. 
and this is a lot of images stamped together. I just wanted to show how many, you could do multiple images and really create a wonderful and beautiful scene um, for your cards or stamped projects, anything really. And it's just really fun how the stamping mask paper allows you to create dimension without bulk. I think this makes mailing cards a lot easier, but still gives your eye that dimensional look that we all love. So still blending here on my pumpkins. Adding a little green for the leaves, and you can see how pretty that green is, but very one-dimensional compared to the pumpkins that have three colors. Going to go ahead, go ahead and add a little bit darker color. And all of the Copic markers that I used will be listed on my blog post on September 14th. I'll have a photo showing all the colors I used for this particular card. And just with that little bit of, of darker color, how much they come to life. Oh, that pumpkin wasn't quite right. Add a little more color. And the best thing about Copic markers, you can go over them as many times as you want and it will never peel or rip your paper. So you, if you go back, you know, in a couple hours or in a couple days and think, wow, that just doesn't look good, you can go ahead and re-blend it, add more color. They're just really wonderful. Colored her skin really quickly and I'm going to color her little jeans. I decided to go for the classic blue jeans on this one. I thought it, the blue would be a nice pop of color against so many fall and autumn colors in the rest of the design. And then I took the blender pen to kind of make the, the knees of her jeans just a tad bit lighter, like they're a little worn. Coloring her sweater a yellow. I didn't want to add introduce too many new colors to the design because then I think it gets a little distracting. So um, stuck with a nice yellow here. I'm going to go ahead and make her um, have some brown hair. Starting with my lightest color. I'm going to go back in with a little bit darker. Add in some dark spots. Then I'll even a little bit darker. Just kind of bl keep blending that all together. I shade, and then I went ahead with my lighter color and shade it just a little bit. With the hair, sometimes you don't want to blend it too much. It kind of loses that natural look. And then I went with a really light color for the cuffs and around the collar of her sweater. I wanted them to be fairly white, but I didn't want it to be the stark white of the background, so I added just a little bit of color. Coloring the bench, and I used about three colors for it as well. I did a little bit darker, and then I went and added my lighter. Then I'll add even a little bit darker to some of those distressed places of the, the wood of the bench to really make it pop before I go back with my lightest color and blend in some of those areas. Add just a little bit of gray to her socks so that they weren't so stark white. And then I'm using some warm gray colors to color in her coffee mug or her hot chocolate mug. So that is how that all came together. Then on the left side of the card, I stamped the large canvas stripe background hero art stamp with some wild honey ink, added some distress ink to the edges, added a little orange zest satin paper tray ink ribbon, tied it in a pretty bow. I'm going to stamp my greeting. I stamped it a few times to get it right with some soft suede Stampin' Up! ink. Then I want to go, that's really white, so I'm going to go ahead and add that scattered straw ink to my greeting. Adhere it to my card. I stamped the card originally, didn't like it. Placed a Stampin' Up! book label over it, a button to the ribbon, and that finished up the card. Place my gift certificate in the card and write a little greeting to the recipient and the card is done. For more information plus supplies used to create this card, please visit www.nicolemagork.typepad.com on September 14th. Thanks for watching.